This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's Monday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. Over the last several weeks, I've been taking a look at color-specific Planeswalkers, and at this point we've taken a look at all of the monocolored Planeswalkers except for green, so today we're finishing that cycle, although I'm also going to be doing one on multicolored Planeswalkers in the future. For now, though, we're talking about green Planeswalkers. The Planeswalker type is, of course, one of the strongest in the entire game, as they frequently are quite capable of taking over games all on their own. You only pay mana for them once, but as long as they remain in play, they give you an effect on every one of your turns, which tends to really snowball on your opponent. Obviously enough to be eligible for this list, a card had to be a mono green Planeswalker. There are 28 cards that meet those requirements, and in this video, we'll talk about the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A top eight at a Pro Tour, Players Tour, Mythic Championship, Mythic Invitational, Legacy, or Vintage Championship is worth two points, and a top eight at a Magic Fester Grand Prix is worth one point. All right, at number 10, it's Vivian, Monster's Advocate. She comes with a powerful static ability that lets you cast creature spells from the top of your library. In cases where you have a creature on top and play it, that's effectively like drawing a card, which is always quite powerful. She complements that with two other pretty powerful abilities. She can raise her loyalty and make a 3-3 that can protect her pretty effectively, especially because it gets a keyword that is actually quite nice. The fact that you can give it reach means the tokens can even protect her from flyers, which is pretty great, and Trample and Vigilance, of course, also have their places. Her minus two is dependent on you casting a creature spell, but when you can cast one, it lets you get another creature directly from your library and put it onto the battlefield. It does have to have a lower mana value, but you're still getting a pretty good deal there, especially when casting something that costs four or more. Vivian has been played in Mono Green and Gruel Aggro decks in Standard, primarily in the sideboard, where she is pretty nice to bring in against opponents who are seeking to make the game go long. She rotates out of Standard in the extremely near future, and so far, she doesn't have any points outside of that format. At number nine, it's another Vivian, Vivian Reed, which was the very first Vivian Planeswalker. This Vivian can give you some nice card selection and card advantage with her plus one, destroy various problematic permanents with her minus three, and she has an emblem that will typically make your board unstoppable. Given that her plus one needs you to have a bunch of creatures, she was mostly played in aggro decks in standard, which could really get some great card selection with the plus one. It also didn't hurt that the format had plenty of problematic enchantments and artifacts, making her minus three pretty useful. She hasn't gained any points though since rotating out of standard. At number eight, it is Nissa, Vital Force. She comes with some very impressive loyalty abilities, including a plus one that turns a land into a five five until end of turn, and a minus three that lets you get a permanent back from your graveyard. Additionally, she has a very accessible ultimate that draws you a card every time you play a land, which obviously is going to turn into a value engine for you. All of that power has made Nissa into a multi-format all-star. She was played in many different green decks while in standard, including Golgari Delirium, Golgari Aggro, Copycat Jund, and all the different energy variants, as well as Golgari Constrictor. In modern, she's primarily been played in both Jund and The Rock. In Legacy, she's gained points in both Elf and Lands decks. She hasn't gained any points so far in 2021, but she's pretty likely to gain more at some point. At number seven, it is Garruk, Primal Hunter. He comes with the ability to raise his loyalty while making a 3-3 that can either protect him or pressure your opponent, and a minus three ability that can draw you a ton of cards. And sometimes when he comes down, it's worth just using his minus three right away because it can give you so many cards. He also has an ultimate that makes a worm army. He was heavily played in Standard for all of these attributes. It was featured in Primeval Titan decks, which could get a ton of lands into play in a hurry, so the ultimate could be particularly threatening, in addition to the fact that he could help you draw into your usually game-winning Primeval Titan. It also saw play in more traditional aggro decks like Green White and Green Red. It was played the most in the format dominating Jund Control and Midrange decks, though. Since rotating out of Standard, he hasn't seen play anywhere else. At number six, we have Nyssa, Voice of Zendikar. At only three mana, she can really take over games early. The plants she makes can be used to protect her, and once you go wide enough, she can use her minus two to pump your whole board. 
In standard, the decks that ran her were generally very capable of going wide, so sometimes you would just play her and use her minus two right away to make your board more imposing. In standard, she was played in decks like green-white tokens and the plus-one-plus-one counter-focused Golgari Constrictor deck. She doesn't quite have any top eights in modern, but she does have several top 16s, generally in plus one plus one counter focused decks like Hardened Scales, though that deck has shifted more towards being an artifact deck, so Nissa doesn't really have a home in modern right this second. However, I do think she is powerful enough to get some points in that format or Pioneer at some point. She just doesn't have any yet. As of now, all her points came in standard, and she hasn't gained any since 2017. At number 5, it is Garrick Wildspeaker. It has the same total score as Nyssa Voice of Zendikar, but it has more Pro Tour top 8s, and that gave it the edge. This was not only the very first Garrick Planeswalker, but also the first green Planeswalker that we ever saw. He was printed in 2007's Lorwyn, the set that introduced Planeswalkers. This Garrick does some quintessential green stuff. He can make a beast, untap lands, and cast Overrun on your whole team. He was played in standard in a wide variety of green decks, including aggressive decks like Elves, but also ramp and various mid-range and control decks. In Extended, he was played in Death Cloud decks, which were particularly happy to play a walker like Garrick because it caused major destruction on the board, but Planeswalkers got to stick around when you would cast Death Cloud. He has also gained a few points in modern junk decks. Garrick doesn't have any points since 2014, and he is likely to slip down this list over time. At number four, it is Garrick Relentless. Garrick doesn't technically have a mono-green color identity, but because it only costs green mana to play, I decided to count it. Garrick has one of the more interesting designs we've ever seen on a Planeswalker. On the Garrick Relentless side, you have a Planeswalker who can churn out wolf tokens. But he can also do 3 damage to a creature, which is enough to kill a lot of things. But the creature he damages also damages him, which is sort of a downside. But the upside there is if Garrick can lower his loyalty counters, like by using that ability, he flips into Garrick the Veil Curse. Now, that does mean if a creature has more than 2 power, in most cases you're out of luck, but it's still crazy upside. Garrick the Veil Cursed comes with a minus 3 that gives plus X, plus X, and trample to the whole board, with that bonus getting bigger the more creatures you have in your graveyard. And this pairs pretty well with his plus 1, which spits out creature tokens, and his minus 1, which lets you sacrifice creatures to tutor up others. Garrick was heavily played in green decks in both block and standard, and he even gained a few points in modern and legacy, but he hasn't gained any points since 2017. At number three, it is Nyssa World Waker. This one comes with a plus one that makes a land into a 4-4 with Trample, and unlike some other versions of that effect, the creature stays that way. That means she can use this ability to protect herself, in addition to being able to pressure your opponent with a big creature. Her other plus one ramps you quite effectively, and she has an ultimate that lets you search up a bunch of basic lands and animate them. She does start with three loyalty, so it takes a while to get there, but that's okay because her other two abilities are so good. Nissa Worldbreaker was heavily played in Standard, gaining all 57 of her points there. She found her way into a whole lot of decks, including Jun, Devotion to Green, and Abs and Midrange, but she doesn't have any points since 2015. At number two, it is Nissa, Vastwood Seer. Like the other Planeswalkers in the Magic Origins double-faced cycle, she starts out as a creature, but can transform into a Planeswalker if certain conditions are met. This whole cycle does a really good job of representing the moment that a Planeswalker's spark was ignited. She starts out as a 3-mana 2-2 that draws you a forest, and that's the kind of card that sees a bit of play in Standard, even if it didn't turn into a Planeswalker, and that's what you get at a minimum out of Nyssa. She helps make sure you hit that 4th land, and that's not a bad thing to have around. Once you get that 7th land into play, she transforms into the powerful Nyssa Sage Animist. She sports a plus 1 that lets you draw a card, a minus 2 that makes a 4-4 four, four elemental to protect her, and an ultimate that turns lands into 6-6 six, six elementals. That's a pretty nice package to have, because you only ever end up paying 3 mana for it. She was one of the more heavily played cards in the standard of her time, and was made especially attractive by the presence of collected company decks, since she was a creature you could grab with the powerful instant, and getting a Planeswalker out of company is pretty amazing. Like most of the Planeswalkers on this list, Nyssa never really transitioned into other formats, but I don't think it's completely out of the question that she could gain points in other formats at some point. And at number one, it is Nyssa who shakes the world. This might be one of the more surprising number ones in this series on Planeswalkers, mostly just because she's so new, most people might not have thought she had a chance, but it turns out she isn't just a number one. She got there with tons of room to spare with about 40 more points than Nyssa Vastwood Seer. So, what makes this Nyssa so powerful? Well, 
As a War of the Spark planeswalker, she comes with a static ability, and hers is incredibly strong. She doubles the mana your forests produce. That's already impressive, but she can also protect herself by turning a forest into a creature permanently and giving it vigilance, which also means you can tap it for mana. This means that she can simultaneously pressure the opponent and protect herself, or alternatively, produce extra mana when you use the ability to untap the forest. Her ultimate then just makes sure you have all the mana ever, at which point it's hard to lose. And really, if you just stick Nyssa into play at all and untap, it was hard for you to lose, just because of the power of that static ability. She was a key card in standard ramp decks, where she could power out huge hydroid crassuses and flying shark tokens. She was also sometimes paired with Wilderness Reclamation to produce stupid amounts of mana. Ultimately, Reclamation was banned out of both Standard and Historic, but that hasn't hurt Nyssa a ton. In fact, decks interested in using a bunch of mana became even more reliant on her. She has, of course, rotated out of Standard by now, but it is pretty likely she continues to gain points in both Pioneer and Historic, and I can't see any other Planeswalkers on this list threatening her position on it. Well, those are the 10 green planeswalkers that have made the biggest impact on competitive magic. If you're interested in owning any of these powerful cards, check out the description where you can find direct Card Kingdom links for every card in the video. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and like it and share it so that others will enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to catch up on videos from the past, you should see some playlists on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.